Minnesota's eight congressional seats saw several incumbents winning re-election. Some in tight races. In the second district, we saw a battle of political newcomers. Southern Minnesota voters picked former radio host Jason Lewis over Angie Craig for Representative John Klein's old job. Here are the numbers with 100% in. Lewis won 47% of the vote. Angie Craig, 45 percent. So Republicans hold that seat. Jason Lewis is going to Congress. In the 3rd District, re-elected incumbent Betty, uh, well, let's give you the incumbents first. Betty McCollum, Keith Ellison, Tom Emmer, Colin Peterson, all re-elected. West Metro, now to the 3rd. Eric Paulson was re-elected. And this was not even close. Many thought this was a tough battle in the 3rd District against Democratic State Senator Terry Bonoff. But look at the numbers here. Eric Paulson with 57 percent of the vote. Terry Bonoff with 43 percent. The Republican crowd was energized as they learned Paulson would serve his fifth term. Took the stage with his wife and two of his daughters to thank supporters and volunteers. I'll just tell you, I am ready to get back to work to get some important things done. And let's be honest, also, our country faces some very real challenges. People don't feel good about the direction that our country's been going. The economy isn't performing as well as it should. Many families are facing dire straits thanks to Obamacare, and we deserve to give them real health care reform that is patient-centered, that actually lowers costs and helps their pocketbooks. This election was not about me. It was about you. It was about fighting for the issues we all care about, putting people above politics. So this election may be over, but our work continues. We will not rest. We will keep fighting for our values and our vision. Turned out to be a very close race for Minnesota's first congressional seat in the southern part of the state. But Democratic Congressman Tim Walz will keep the seat that he's held since 2006. Walz beat out Republican Jim, Jim Hagedorn by just over 2,500 votes. Walz easily beat Hagedorn two years ago, but this time the race tightened as part of the wave election for Republicans. Voters in Minnesota's Iron Range re-elected Representative Rick Nolan by a very close margin over Republican Stuart Mills. Here's a look at that vote. Rick Nolan with just over 50% to Stuart Mills at 49.6%. Overall spending in the 8th District topped $21 million, making it one of the most expensive congressional races in the country. And there's also a close battle for control of the state legislature. The House is going to remain under control of Republicans. That is settled. But the outcome of the fight for control of Minnesota's Senate... Well, we're still watching it. Democrats were protecting a six-seat majority, but they suffered some heavy losses in rural districts that could cost them control as well. Final word will hinge on some close elections in Lakeville and Apple Valley. A pair of races in Plymouth and St. Cloud that favored Republicans are headed for an automatic recount because of tiny margins of victory. Minnesotans spoke very clearly tonight that they wanted to make sure that there was a check and balance on Governor Dayton for his final two years in office. And so, Esme, uh, that obviously, seeing the state legislature, it does look like there's a very good chance Republicans could take control right. of both houses. And I, I really think that this comes down to the backlash in these final weeks over the Minshore rate hikes. Mm. I think there was a very powerful ad of, of a couple from Goodhue County whose premiums are going through the roof, and they said, you have to vote against the Democrats. And I think this is on the Democrats. I think that is exactly what happened here. There was a state constitutional amendment to vote on this year as well, and this was about lawmakers' salaries, and it passed overwhelmingly. The amendment allows a panel of citizens instead of the lawmakers to set legislators' pay.